as we come into this week for the Skip Barber Racing School Championship. Two thirds of the season sits behind us. Four weeks are left. If you've run every week thus far, your series is scored official. Now you can try to wipe any bad results due to drop weeks, try to buff some points up, and try to improve your improve your way up the standings. Starting off the first, the first race of the final third of the season, we come to Olton Park here in a few moments time on RaceBot TV and iRacing Live. Join us. Welcome back to RaceBot TV and iRacing Live as coverage begins of round number nine of your Skip Barber Racing School Championship live from Moulton Park. Randy Chinneth, Alvin Nieves, and Hugo Louis bringing you all the action here today. And Alvin, last few weeks we've pretty much been sending these little Formula 2000 cars out to big Grand Prix circuits of the world. We've been to Road America, we've been to Brazil, we've uh, been to the UK. This week, we take these cars to the sort of racetrack they're really designed to race on, and this is a very tight club circuit here in the UK. Uh, granted, these are uh, US-based series, US-based cars, but this is the sort of track these little cars are designed for. Absolutely, Randy. But one other thing that this track also has is that it's relatively fast, and if you consider, yeah, it's tight, it's tight in terms of how narrow it is, but the speeds that these cars will get in here, it's really fast that what we're gonna see in here today so it's gonna be really interesting how the drivers in here are gonna be able to set up the overtakes uh, because like you just mentioned in previous races we've been to Grand Prix tracks which are relatively wide so kind of easy to set up the overtakes but in here it's gonna be a real challenge and it is for those who are curious we are running the version without the Britain's chicane so they're gonna running the running long version of the track Coming through Cascades, Island Bend, and Shell Oil's corner. which is bypassing Britons, going up and over Hilltop, but we are running the Hislop chicane at the end of the long straightaway. So that's going to really open up a passing opportunity, I think, for these guys, Alvin, because typically, as you see on this racetrack, there really isn't a, a very large amount of good passing opportunities, I think, without that chicane. And especially if you run that first chicane, you don't really get a long enough straight to be able to line anyone up and really throw a move. But with that chicane, I think, personally, this has to be my favorite layout. And if you think, if you take that chicken, there will be pretty much only one overtaking opportunity. And that's really kind of pushing it. And that is turn number 13, Lodge Corner. And that is pretty much the one of the one of the prime overtaking opportunities that we are going to see. But when you add that chicken, hill slops, hill slops, well, that adds another dimension because that shell, shell oil corner, it becomes even more so important. If you want to make a run and go for an overtake, that will be the corner to, the corner to take out the best. 
though, looking right now at your championship standings, Philippe LeBaire continues to lead the way with 1,572 points. Johnny Gunde sits in second with 1,500. Then you have Kane Halliburton, Greg Seitz, and Carlos Rivera Saints. Those are your top five. 250 points separate that top five. It really is, I think, Alvin, top two that really have a chance at this point between Philippe LeBaire, Johnny Gunde, but Halliburton and Seitz in particular in third or fourth, they aren't quite out of it just yet. Well, definitely not out, but for Kane Halliburton, Greg Sice, and Tuon Tron, they need, win they need wins because if you look at what Philippe Leber and Johnny Gindy has been doing these uh, Wednesday night races, for those three, they need wins if they want to catch up to Johnny Gindy and Philippe Leber. And you know, it starts here with qualifying, especially on this track, qualifying is all the more important because like we mentioned, Randy, there's not really that many overtake opportunity so qualifying being on pole position all the more important today as the last few moments tick over we're going to go down the results of your qualifying session and how the drivers in the 17 car field are going to roll off for 13 laps live from olton park so the drivers begin to take the grid. We have actually some interesting names here partaking today. Some people we don't normally see. One of them sits on pole position. The number four, Miko Nasi, puts in a time of 1 minute 46.663 seconds. He slots himself on the pole position ahead of Felipe Bear, starting on his outside with a lap time of 1 minute 46.748. Johnny Gundy and Greg Seitz, they make up row number two with Justin, Tipter, Justin Tipton and Gresham Wagner making up row three. Justin Smith and Carlos Rios Sainz make up the fourth row with Tuan Tron and Soto Muto, row number five. Row number six is Andrew Castro and Andrew Picario with Kane Halliburton and Jeremiah Morton starting behind them. Christian Capanga and David Kalb make up row number eight with Benny Simonson starting in 17th who did not put in a qualifying time. Alvin, we saw the shorter version of this track last season, and really the racing was somewhat, say, anticlimactic. They didn't put on the greatest show. I think we might be in for a very good race here today with this longer layout. Absolutely, and if you think we got longer straights uh, in comparison to the shorter layout that we raced in last season, so the longer straights in these cars, yeah, it's all about momentum, but that little bit of forward of slipstream that these cars will, will get, perhaps that will be the big difference that we will see in this race today so we're still waiting for a couple of drivers to take the grid here and then we will be underway guy these guys have about 20 more seconds to get themselves onto the grid so if they fail to do so we will be starting this 17 car field out of this 13 car race here shortly regardless Couple interesting names, like we said. A couple guys we're not used to seeing. Miko Nasi's done typically race in these races. Grisham Wagner doesn't typically race in these. Benny Simonson as well. Andrew Castro is not really a regular name. Sota Muto. There's about half dozen or so people we're not used to seeing. Lights are on, revs are building. Lights go out and we are green and racing here at Olton Park. Miko Nasi doesn't get all that good of a jump. Fleet Bit Bear, though, gets very good traction coming off the corner and deeper in the field, fighting for six. They're almost three wide as they're fanning out into corner number one for the first time. That was a 17 machine, I believe, of Justin Smith, who is fighting for that. He's already gotten a good start here, picked himself up a spot early, moves himself into six. And, oh, Fleet Bit Bear, he gets shoved off from the two machine, I think. Uh, no, that, yeah, that was the two machine to Johnny Gundy. Problems for those two as they run down through the first couple corners. Leave the bear goes to the back of your field early. And I gotta say, not only Felipe Bear and Johnny Gindy got a bad start, but also Greg Size, he got a horrible start uh, right there. And he pretty much starting from all the way in P4. He's pretty much right now, if, uh, if I get, uh, well, he got all the way to P3, sorry. So we got a couple other incidents happening out there on the racetrack. We have Christian Kapanga with heavy damage, and Justin Tipton was slow and spinning outside of the hairpin as well. Not sure what happened there, though I was focusing elsewhere. But focusing back out front, it's no more four machine of Makonasi. He's sorted himself out in the lead somewhat comfortably, but Johnny Gundy is right underneath his gearbox, so he can't get too comfortable just yet through that his lot chicane for the first time up towards Clay Hill and the run up into Drew. It's gonna be your top five as they run. Miko Nasi from Johnny Gundy, Greg Seitz, Gresham Wagner, and Justin Smith. A couple guys up a couple positions at the start of this thing already. Now through Druid and now down the run in towards Warwick Bridge. 
and run into Lodge. Lodge is basically the final corner, but there is a slight kink that is counted, and looks like Johnny Goonie is going to have a look at the inside. No, not quite able to do it. Into Lodge corner, gets back to the outside, run the traditional line through. Off what is essentially your final corner, up and over this crest. Now you come back down onto the, this front straightaway. Lap number one of 13, score complete. Miko Nasi uh, is able to stay up front all the way through here in your top five, getting somewhat spread out early here, Alan. Oh, we yeah, got a car way off the 17 and Justin Smith. Yeah, well, uh, well, looking back at, at the start, the driver that got the really horrible start was uh, actually Justin Tipton. But, you know, uh, speaking of teammates and everything, uh, Philippe Leber, he, he's, he's been pretty much trying to nurse the car, trying to come back into the pits to the point that he even had to cut the... His left side. I'm going to interrupt okay. you here, Alvin, because we got a race happening for the lead right now. And Johnny Gundy put the moves on the four Amico Nazi. He moves himself to the point here. And the four machine on Nazi gets sent back to the second position now. They work themselves through Shell Oil's corner of the hairpin and up toward, towards corner number six. Past the uh, chicane here at Britain's. Like you said, not using this version, but here comes the four machine. Good slipstream on the run down into his lobs, down the hilltop chicane. And they work themselves to the bottom of the hill here. The four going to have the outside line. The two machine Agundi has the favored line. The four not quite able to make that outside line work. So it seems easy to defend here, Alvin, if you take it a defensive line early into the chicane. Relatively easy to that to defend for sure, but you also have to make sure that you get a, if you are the leading car, you get a good run coming out of his slot because now we're seeing Mikanasi trying to put just that little bit of more pressure on Johnny Gindi com, uh, coming here into into Druid. So look for Mikanasi to perhaps uh, go for a move here going into large corner. Let's see what he does. Uh, but uh, I think that for now he's I think he's pretty much happy to uh, try to stay just right behind Johnny Gindi, but. Randy, very important, that his love chicane. You gotta get a good exit because otherwise you connect through it and then large corner, it will be an, it could, it could set you up potentially for an overtake. Indeed it can as they work themselves into corner number one now for the third time. That's Old Hall Corner down the avenue and up towards Denton's at corner number two. Cascades, that long left-hander at corner number three. Three turn two here, then into Cascades. Long left-hander, very awkward radius and very awkward cambering. Almost constantly changing radius corner and the camber doesn't really stay uh, the same as well through the face of the corner. Now they work themselves into this left-hand kink. Corner number four, very difficult corner to get right. And now, hard on the brakes in just a moment's time for Shell Oil's corner at this hairpin. A lot of camber at this corner to help you. It's a very faint corner. Because of that, you can carry a large amount of speed through it. Now, back down the back straightaway again. What does Miko Nasi do? Is he going to be able to get the slip and make a move? Greg Seitz and Gresham Wagner, by the way, all the while, have been closing the gap. And the four looks the driver's left. But he isn't quite close enough with the slip stream. And here comes the three of Greg Seitz. But no, he doesn't actually go for it here. I think Greg Seitz being a little bit too patient. I think he could have made that move, Alvin. Didn't make the move when he had the opportunity. And that could come to bite him at a racetrack like this. I think for Greg Seitz, like... Like we just mentioned, he's trying to go for the win. So right now, it really doesn't make any sense to try to be that aggressive. That said, Mikonasi, Johnny Gindi, really racing that uh, really hard for that lead. Yes, Mikonasi, it kind of seems like he is kind of trying to harass the mirrors of Johnny Gindi just a little bit here and there. But I think it's uh, more Johnny Gindi trying to defend just that little bit to make sure that Mikonasi doesn't get ahead. And also, as we typically see in the Skip Barber Championship, we have one hell of a second pack happening in the mid-pack. It basically starts at Andre Castro, who Andre Castro, uh, who currently runs fifth, and it basically goes all the way back to 14th. So this is basically 10 cars deep here, from basically your midpoint of the top 10 all the way through the top 15 here. Very tight group of cars that are running basically all four positions. The top couple cars have themselves a little bit of a gap, but they're not very far away from that big group album because of that. They need to keep themselves careful and be aware of that. They want to try to open the gap up. If the 12 and the 17 of Smith and Castro start racing, that could be disaster for them and they could get swarmed by that train behind. Disaster for them and Randy, uh, as I was looking into them, I kind of was uh, trying to get a peek at them on on the last lap and there even was a point that at this point of the circuit they've been even going three wide trying to go for Chell for Chell Oath Corner. So like you just mentioned Randy, this group they really like like to race really hard. Yeah like the meaning of patience trying to get those leaders well. Uh, it's kinda like well too too little too late. We gotta race. Let's take as many points as possible.
Speaking of, we are having a race. The race for the lead is on again as Miko tries to make a move into the chicane, but this time he makes it stick on the outside. Johnny Goody makes a mistake, puts all four wheels off onto the grass and loses two positions. I also see smoke happening behind the leaders, but the four of Miko Nasi picks up the race lead. I want to see what this smoke was a little bit deeper down in the order. I think it may have been Jeremiah Morton, who has heavy damage right now as he comes out of the chicane. No, it actually wasn't him. Not sure what that was. I saw maybe in slight contact from a couple. Actually, no, it's just a lockup from the six there was contact but overall a very uh, very small incident but the four machine importantly alvin moves himself back to the race lead not only the number four but also the, the number 17 justin myth uh going into hill stop try, trying to go for that move on over uh andre castro and like really you know these groups are really starting to race really hard and you and you can say these uh this Mid pack, uh, it's all about you know. Let's try to get uh, too much to the front of this pack as possible because Randy, you know, the more laps we get in, the more impatience they they will get, and well, there could be a time that we could get some with that we can start seeing some wheel to wheel contact. Top three still very close. Johnny Gundy, even though he made that slight mistake, did a very good job of keeping the gap close. See, that was just four wheels off, a little overseer moment. He's going to be frustrated with it, but the fact that he's still within eye shot of those two leaders and really close enough to make this uh, difficult for them, Alvin, I think is going to be important. That second group coming off that hairpin now as well. Andre Castro and Justin uh, Justin Smith, who we thought were probably going to get be able to open up a group, has been able to do the exact opposite and because of that, that second group has swarmed on top of them and the fight for the race lead is eating up yet again. Miko Nasi defends on the inside line as Greg Seitz tried to make it stick and the number two machine of Johnny Gundy wasn't able to make a move uh, to get himself up into the second spot. Absolutely great. And you know, for Johnny Gundy now, he needs a, uh, he's running right now in third place. I think he's trying to get a, he needs to be a, a little bit more patient because uh, what happened to him in, in that uh, when Miko Nasi went into the lead, he needs to start uh, thinking about what are the moves that, that he's going to make. That said, Greg Size, I think he wants that win more than Johnny Gindy because we, uh, what we talk about Randy at the at the beginning of the broadcast, Greg Size, if he wants to move into the lead of the standings here, he needs to start looking for wins. Side-by-side -side racing happening at this second uh, pack. Andre Castro and Justin Smith were side-by-side -side into the final corner, and Castro is the one who came out ahead. The 14 machine of Carlos Sainz, as we typically see, was throwing his hat into the ring as well. Very aggressive driver in the series, and he gets an awesome drive off the first corner. Moves up to the inside of the 17 machine of Justin Smith down into the braking zone at turn three. The 14 machine going to pick up that spot. Justin Smith needs to be perfect on the exit here, otherwise he risks getting swarmed by both Tuan Tron and Andrew Percario. Tron had to actually lift out of it and because that Percario has a bit of a run on the run into corner number four, this left, left hand gink with the 13 machine not close enough to make something happen. Down now into the shell oil bend here at the hairpin through this very fast tight 180 degree radius corner up and off they come and the fighting in this second pack is immense right now as your top four are starting to get a little bit spread out. Definitely the top four they kind of seem like they have come just a little bit uh compared to the start of the race and I think they are starting to realize that there's really no point in trying to battle for the positions however anytime that you can get an opportunity to go for an overtake and I think that's what Greg Sais is trying to look in I think Greg Sais just left just a little bit more space to see if he can get a run so leaders lead themselves now down into Druids this very awkward double apex right hander it's sort of Really, it's a very difficult corner to ever race anyone through, and that's one of the reasons I love this longer layout, because with the shorter layout, you're kind of forced to have to make moves there. Here, you get that second long breaking zone. Second pack, though, is heating up yet again. Tuan Tron currently leading the way, but a little bit deeper down. Andrew Picario and Kane Halliburton are side by side as they work themselves now into this tight right-hander. At the end of the lap in the 17, that's Justin Smith, I believe. He's off the racetrack at that final corner. He's now going to lose all sorts of time. He's basically out of this fight, but now Kane Halliburton loses that spot to Andrew Picario as they work themselves in a corner number one, and he almost had Sota Muto for company, but didn't quite end up happening as they work themselves now tor towards turns two and three the 13 machine again precario very good drive off that first corner hard on the brakes on the braking zone into this left hander at turn three and the 13 machine going to move him up himself up 
into P number. I believe this is going to be seven, and actually Kane Halliburton bounces as well. Here comes the ten of Sota Muto. So the five going to drop three spots in just one corner, and that's one of the things I was talking about, Alvin. If you get passed into corner number three, it's a very good chance you just get freight trained into corner number four. And that pretty much for 2 on Tran started all the way in turn in turn number 13. He was off track and that pretty much set up for for Despac to try to catch him up. And well, that pretty much, uh, not only he lost that lead of that pack, now he is all the way fourth in Despac. So for 2 on Tran, one of the other contenders for this championship that he needed to move up, well, this is not good news. Something happened with the lead pack, and I'm not really sure what. We, so, we seem to have lost the three of Greg Seitz. Oh, there was an incident from the lead going down into the hairpin. This actually came from Greg Seitz. I didn't actually see this, but going into the hairpin, the three machine clipped the four who was leading the race, and actually the way it worked out, the four got straightened out, and Johnny Gundy ended up in the wall, and Greg Seitz has lost all sorts of time, maybe a little bit of damage, but a slight mistake there, Alvin, essentially puts Johnny Gundy out of the race when really no fault of his own. Four Machine almost got spun out, and for Greg Seitz, who really caused the incident, he gets to drop down basically into the second group. Near Randy, that turn five, Chell Oil's corner. It is kind of e it kind of seems like an easy turn to kind of go in, but you know that trying to go into the braking zone of that turn, it's not really that level. So you also kind of start losing just that little bit of the of the rear trying to turn in because the turn not only is it really slow it is really banked in and for Nikonasi it kind of it kind of seems like he didn't get the best of entries and that kind of sent uh, some sort of a Constantino effect that with Greg Sykes trying to go in and like you just mentioned uh, John again the pretty much the innocent bystander so right now the 14 machine to Carlos Harris Sainz is fighting with Andre Castro go a little bit deeper down the field you have Andrew Picario and Kane Halliburton they're a two-car pack then you get to uh Excuse me, current, uh, currently Soda Muto, who leads really this uh, third four car train out here. But something interesting I was noticing is that Miko Nasi, since getting that damage, seems to be somewhat off the pace that he was running before. And Gresham Wagner actually took a good chunk out of, of time out of him in that last lap. It'll be interesting to see if that damage is hurting that four machine enough for the seven to really close up. As it's going to be five laps to go next time by, this is going to be a difficult handful of laps, I think, for that four of Miko Nasi to be able to hold on to this lead I think for Nico Nasi what he needs to do pretty much what he is doing right now I think he's doing a good job yes he has that little bit of damage and on a track like this it it's really not going to be a in, in a negative way it's going to affect him but on the long straights that are coming in especially from Shell Oil to Hillsop that may be a little bit interesting so your leaders come across the line to begin lap number nine. Going to be five laps to go here. The fight for third, excuse me, fourth is going to be back on as the 14 machine is saying. He comes back across the stripe to officially pick up that fourth position. And the 12 of Andre Castro is right under the gearbox through corner number one. But that said, the 14 did a fantastic job through there. We're able to open the gap and the 12 machine is not very close. And that's unfortunate because he went to make a bit of a lunge down into corner number three, but he wasn't quite close enough for that reason. Actually, he's closed up a lot on that 14 machine is a fantastic drive through that left hander at corner number three and actually switching the 14 same down into corner number four to the 12 machine right here out of Andre Castro getting a little bit physical with the 14 a little bit of bump drafting here they work themselves now through the hairpin and down this long back straightaway here the 12 though doesn't get a good drive off that hairpin and now they're going to come into the his lap chicane 12 likely going to be working the uh, slip screen is Andre Castro's now where is he going to go? Inside or outside? Is he even going to make the move? No, he's going to choose to be patient for now inside of five laps to go. But that 12 machine helmet, that little bit of a bump, a little bit risky at a track like this. A little bit risky. And, you know, trying to go for a bump draft is really the last thing that you want in these cars because even though it doesn't seem like they have that much downforce, and they really don't depend that much on downforce. That little downforce that these wings produce, that is more than enough for them. And, you know, any bit of downforce that you can get is definitely an advantage so you don't really want to be bomb drafting in this car and trying to bend some of the wings here and there fight for pa has been hot as well this is towards the tail end of your top 10 and this has been basically uh just where a lot of action has been happening the six machine and david cobb currently in that spot and he gives it up early to soto muto there's likely a bit of damage 
on that number 16 machine. So Soto Beach is going to pick up your A spot. Also have a couple other cars in this little pack. You have Tuan Tron in the 5. Then you have the 17 of Justin Smith in this little three or four car scrap. They are somewhat spread out. There are a couple other tracks, uh, excuse me, a couple other cars uh, straggling behind just a little bit for the most part. Those are the four involved in this fight. Just up ahead of them, the 13 of Picario still fighting with the eight of Kane Halliburton and really Alvin. Those two, they got hooked up early and sort of worked themselves through that train and ever since have done a good job of separating themselves from that pack. It is, and you know, They've been really fighting, but uh, like you just mentioned, they separated just a little bit, and pretty much what we have seen um, from this secondary backpack that we always get to see, it's been forming like a two by two by two packs that we are seeing that they're pretty much trying to fight each other for our drivers. That is a lot more preferable because you know that if you make a mistake, yeah, you you are going to be overtaken, but it's not like you're gonna like you're gonna be overtaken by a train of cars and can. With that said, Kane Halliburton looking here to the right side, going for P, what, what, to, what is P number six or P number five, uh, if I uh, if I remember correctly, and Kane Halliburton up ahead. So close fighting happening here as Gresham Wagner just rechecking in the lead has done a good job the last couple laps to reel in Mika Nasi. The gap's come down by a few tenths of a second, not a huge amount, and he's not quite close enough to be making any moves, but he is there or thereabouts to where on these long straightaways, which for these little cars, there is some pretty long runs on this racetrack. That seven machine is going to be getting enough of a slipstream to uh, be able to really close the distance. going to help him out. Maybe just be a few hundreds every single straight, but it's going to be enough to actually... Uh, actually be important here now keep in mind these, these guys are all racing for in terms of the points top five from seasons two three and four here on iRacing they enter themselves into a race off for a three-day skip barber racing school whoever wins that race off gets that three-day skip barber racing school as well in seasons two three and four whoever actually wins those championships those drivers get a one-day racing school, and every season, any driver who does an official amount of races will earn themselves a one-day racing school as well. I saw one driver a little bit wide through turn number four, but I don't think it's anyone important, and it certainly doesn't seem to be that way. I don't see anyone really hurting, but we do have a close fight happening out here on the racetrack, and it is at this P8 uh, section of the racetrack. David Cobb actually very loose through turn number four in this pack and because of that the 17 of Justin Smith able to make a move up the inside at the hairpin. Tuan Tron tried to make something of it as well. So for the tail end of your top tail, uh, 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 excuse me, the tail end of your top ten Alvin, this four car group starting to get themselves into a very very tight section uh, in terms of racing here in the closing stages. Absolutely, you know that we're pretty much down to what will be essentially three laps to go in this pack you know they this was part of the secondary pack that they were fighting really hard for uh, for what is what was p5 at the moment the pack is really starting to break up just a little bit so now the battle is here for pa but with that said uh justin smith trying to look for on the right side of david cobb let's see if he can go for a move here going into druids and I think David Cobb just gonna let him go by, but also Tuan Trunk kind of looks for the opportunity to look for David Cobb, and I think David Cobb is gonna go two places down. So Justin Smith moves himself to the point in this, and David Cobb is gonna lose himself another spot here to Tuan Tron. I actually think he's gonna make it a third, and here comes Muto on the inside of that final corner in the 16 of Cobb. No traction off that final corner. They're gonna take two to go here at the stripe, and now move Muto up into the ninth spot. David Cobb gets cycled down to 10th, and Alvin, you need to get streaming, because according to the chat, you get an easy $100 if you yell cheese pizzas out on stream. Uh, nah, I don't think I don't think Hugo will let me actually do that, but you know, uh, going <laughs> going back into the going back uh, to the race here, you know, this pack here is gonna you know trying to fight really hard, but just in case, it kind of looks like he's trying to get a little bit too comfortable here, and Tuan Tron looks like he's gonna get a good run here coming into turn number four. Let's see if he can get him under breaking here into Chelsea's corner. Uh, for now, no, but I think to uh, watch out for Tuan Tron because I think he's trying to get a run here coming out, and I think he got a better run than. Justin Smith, so let's see what Tuan Tron sees. It kind of looks a little bit to the left, to the right, tries to get it, looks for the left side, and I think Tuan Tron going here side by side with Justin Smith going into his lap. Let's see, Justin Smith, Tuan Tron, side by side. Still side by side, but still fighting for it, but it looks like Tuan Tron got the position. 
good move by Tuan Tron in the closing stages. Lap and a half left to go for this second group. This is basically the closest action we have on the racetrack. Next closest uh, fight is between Halliburton and Precario a few spots up. But due to the sheer number of cars, we're going to keep the focus on this as they work themselves through Druids now down into this final straightaway towards the final corner at Lodge. And then it's going to be the start of your final lap. All four cars come through under a blanket as they come off the final corner. They're going to be taking the white flag. And Alvin may not be a shill, but I am. Cheese pizzas as they come up and over the hill at Deer Leap. Top four, one lap to go into corner number one for the final time. And Tuan Tron has done a good job to stretch a gap here. The 17 and the 10 fight it out side by side into the first corner. And the 17 is going to defend for now. But the 10 of Muto, he's going to get the undercut. He's going to be on the outside for turn three. But I think he can likely work the momentum here. But the inside tends to be optimal. They're going to be side by side through the third corner. Down this straightaway into corner number four. They might just make it three wide. It's the 16 and David Cobb gets aggressive. And yes, he does. Slots it up the inside. But he intelligently lifts out of it. Going to be two wide with contact. The 16 gets into the 17. All three cars get spun off into the grass. The 10 machine has damage. The 16 has damage. The 17. And nowhere to go. I don't think Jeremiah Morton expected a car to be there. The fight for the lead is heating up as well. Dresham Wagner is reeled in the four. And they're side by side through the Hislop chicane. Here they go now in the four machine. Inside groove through the third and final part. And that's going to favor him. Now, Gresham Wagner tries to get as much momentum as he can for the rundown into Druids. He really only has, well, I wouldn't say he has a good passing opportunity left. Druids is going to be his first one, though. Can he make the move here? He looks up the inside, but no, he's not going to do it. I think that might just compromise his exit. He might be close enough trying to work the draft now on the run into Lodge. Is he going to be close enough? He's going to look up the inside, but he's not nearly brave enough to try from that far back through the final corner. And the four of Miko Nasi is going to defend and be able to hold off and be able to come away with this race victory tonight here from Olden Park. A little bit further down the order, side by side, is a 13 of Percario with the 8 of Halliburton. Percario is going to be able to reign supreme in that one. Huge dramas on that final lap, Alvin. And like I was saying, you know, final lap, those cars, they really wanted to get... They really wanted to get that position, and Randy, we were just mentioning, the track was, it's not really that wide for for those cars to go to, sometimes even three wide, and when you add that this track is really fast, well, you know, sometimes you have to give, but, you know, it was racing, they were racing for it, it was the last lap, sometimes contact happens. Getting a replay up of the second pack accident. Uh, Hugo was apparently watching the lead. I was busy watching that. I didn't realize the fight for the lead was heating up. But big incident there as they went through corner number four is basically, I think, Alvin just flat out that uh, I believe the 17 of Justin Smith. He tried to make it three wide, and I think he wasn't expecting. I think he just flat out missed his breaking point. Uh, not realizing that those two cars in front of them would need to slow up that much. Actually, no, I take that back. It wasn't Justin Smith. Justin Smith was the one who got hit at the 16 of David Cobb. I think Cobb just misjudged when the 17 would have to lift because you're really not used to drivers going too wide through that sector of the racetrack. It is Randy, and you know, for David Cobb, he was really trying to look for for that to go three wide. And you know, two wide is really hard to try, try to imagine trying for them to go three wide. And well, for David Cobb, it kind of like you just mentioned, he just kind of misjudged the drivers trying to lift just a little bit because, well, they had to lift. They were going side by side. And, well, fortunately, that contact, they, that contact happened. So, after 13 laps, I said this was going to be an exciting one. He said this is a hot lap circuit. You can have some close and fun, exciting racing at this racetrack. Let's go down your post-race results after 13 laps here tonight. So when it's all said and done, Miko Nasi, who's not a regular in this series, someone I don't think I've ever seen run before, gets the pole and comes away with the race win. Grisham Wagner going to finish P2 with Greg Seitz, Andre Castro, and Andrew Precario rounding out your top five. Kane Halliburton is going to come home sixth with Tuan Tron in seventh, David Cobb in eighth, Jeremiah Morton ninth, and Christian Campanga rounding out your top ten. Justin Tipton finishes 11th, Justin Smith 12th, Soto Muto 13th, Carlos Rivera Sainz 14th, Johnny Gundy 15th, Benny Simonson 16th, and Felipe Bear after that lap one turn two incident comes home in the 17th position. Alvin, that was, I think, honestly, the race of the season thus far. 
it wasn't you know for what we were expecting for a track that is this narrow we were expecting that much action but you know drivers really throwing caution out of the wind some drivers you know wanted to go for position drivers going trying to go for the win and well at the end of the day Nico Nasi he came in for the win he came in did the job that he had to do up in the middle part they didn't disappoint either so looking into next week this next Wednesday Alvin these guys move themselves back over to North America and it's in my opinion what is one of the premier circuits in North America that didn't doesn't get enough love we're going to VIR and we're running a very interesting track that I've actually never raced before I've never broadcasted before and that's the VIR North course that's gonna be I think an interesting little circuit for these guys it will be Randy and you know uh, I really haven't raced in that format either so for you and me that'll be like an First time for us, we really don't know the layout that, that well, so I think that for you and me, we got some homework to do. We have a little bit of homework to do indeed, but that's going to wrap it up for us here on RaceBot TV and I Racing Live. Thank you for joining us. As I said, one of the best races of the season thus far. Be sure to tune in for VIR next week. I hope a lot of these names that turned out tonight, if you're Miko Nazi, if you're Gresham Wagner, if you're Sota Muto, if you're Benny Simonson, if you're any of those guys that typically we don't see on these Wednesday night races, please, please, please come back out because this was a fantastic race to watch. Be sure, everyone who tuned in tonight, to tune in next week when we go live at VR North Course. But for myself, Randy Chinnett, from Alvin Nieves, and from Hugo Louis, from everyone at RaceBot, have yourself a good evening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.